Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and today we are having a look at yet another small but fascinating piece of World War II equipment. This is an Acme 470 clicker, probably better known as a D-Day cricket. This was used by members of the American 101st Airborne Division during the early hours of the Operation Overlord landings on June 6, 1944, as a means of identification friend or foe, or IFF. Now, the idea to use this is typically attributed to General Maxwell Taylor, the commander of the 101st Airborne, who ordered them in response to problems encountered during the Operation Husky landings on Sicily in July 1943. Now, during that particular operation, the inability of American paratroops to easily identify each other in the dark led to a lot of confusion and unfortunate incidents such as friendly fire or misidentifying enemy forces as friendly ones. So in the spring of 1944, just a few weeks before the D-Day landings, Taylor ordered a rush batch of 7,000 of these devices from the Joseph Hudson Company of Birmingham. Now, this company, today known as Acme Whistle, has a rather interesting history. It was founded in 1870, and it was the first company to produce a whistle specifically for police use. So the officers of the Metropolitan Police at the time, known as Bobbies or Peelers after their founder, Sir Robert Peel, were not equipped with whistles, but rather wooden rattles, like this one. But this proved less than effective, and so the Hudson Company saw the opportunity to produce a better product, which turned into the iconic police whistle. They also invented the ubiquitous P-whistle, which was first marketed under the brand name of Acme Thunder. Now, you're probably snickering at the name Acme due to its association with the Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. But interestingly enough, in the early to mid-20th century, Acme was a very common company and brand name, not only because the word literally means the peak or pinnacle of something signifying good quality, but also because it starts with an A and thus would end up at the beginning of the phone book. And this arms race amongst companies to show up first in the phone book led to a plethora of companies with names like Double A or Triple A or Ace or Acme. And it was this trend that Warner Brothers was parodying in its Looney Tune shorts. So now you know. So the 470 clicker was originally designed as a timekeeping device for conductors and band leaders, and in use on D-Day, one click had to be answered by two clicks. And this made it easy to tell if that soldier you saw in the distance or hiding behind a bush was friend or foe. And in addition to the clicker, paratroopers also used a number of call and response verbal identification codes. So on the first day of the invasion, this was Flash, which had to be answered by Thunder. And on the second day, this was changed to Hustle, answered by Along, the change in code being necessary to prevent the Germans from catching on and using these codes against the Allies. And for this reason, the clickers were only ever intended to be used on the first morning of the invasion, after which they were ordered to be discarded. And because of that, although there were 7,000 of these issued for the invasion, today very few of them remain, only around seven. Now, this particular example is a replica. I bought this at the museum in Caen in Normandy, which is near the Utah and Omaha beaches. And it is quite obviously a reproduction because it is boldly stamped D-Day and the 6th of June 1944. You'll also see versions that are stamped with U.S., but those are also replicas because the originals were not an officially issued item. They were ordered at the last minute from a private firm and thus would only be stamped with the trademark Acme. Now, these, of course, have featured in a whole bunch of media depicting the Overlord operation, including Band of Brothers and The Longest Day, in which there is a memorable scene where a U.S. paratrooper mistakes the click of a German soldier's rifle bolt for the sound of a cricket and gets himself shot in the process. Though, so far as I've been able to tell, this was invented for the movie and never actually happened in real life. Though, if any of you have sources claiming that it actually did happen, please let me know. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to have a very brief look at this iconic piece of kit. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on a full-length video where I'll look at yet more fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.